So Sewa Ami here is still in the news, and then one of the top journalists, Oya Paula Dumoche. So the Nano to Assembly be na Ebusiya one man the intuto of the whole thing. Na yeah, Assembly you call na ya kwa kofa na ya diaba na onye ni kan ni baby aya na au moti inti no Ebusiya ya ma ya kasa onye tente ya bako ya kwa fe ma Paula Dumoche onso odi ababe shum obano Oya Sewa Ami here. And now we will see a top video and no Muslim baby. Here's a photograph of uh, Mr. Me here, the Ghana Police Service, and uh, the unknown man uh, called Henry Fitz. Well, he says he's quite well known. So, uh, this is this is the story. Uh, Mr. Me here has reported Henry Fitz and his accomplices, his assignees, to the Ghana Police Service who have. Uh, upon the reports uh, issued a summons against Henry Fitz and uh, some of the people. We're going to go into the details. All right. What did we put out in our flyer today? Here it is. We're going to show it right now. And uh, mind you, after this, I'll be doing it in Akan and also in Ghana so people can get the explanation of the law correctly. All right. Uh, so this is what we said. Sewa Ami here makes a bold effort to recover her image by using a complaint, by issuing a complaint and obtaining a summons from the police against those who mounted a dastardly effort to ruin her reputation, including one Henry Fitz. The accused persons are to answer for allegations of extortion and unwarranted release of videos, setting up the, best, the biggest criminal trial of the Fourth Republic, a trial whose potential social media following can be compared only to the election petition 2013. Tonight, we analyze the story, assess the charges, and explain the law in three and uh, in three as well. We'll do it in Ghana as well. You can't miss it. You know that uh, when you go to uh, um, Europe and you are learning, and you tell them you are from Ghana, and they say, "Do you speak Tui?" That's what they say. They are not able to say Tui. Do you speak Tui? Uh, so tonight we are going to speak Tui. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so over with. Now let's get the facts. This is Sewa Mehe, who, who is quite well known to uh, many people. So a short video purporting to depict Sewa Meher and another person by name Henry Fit made the rounds online. I didn't see the video, I just saw the image, the screenshot image. So it is said, uh, according to the story uh, from social media, that the allegations are all substantiated. But it says the gentleman in the video uh, was taking care of Sewa. They were in a relationship, apparently. Uh, some monies had been mentioned, apparently, that she was, he was supposed to remunerate her a certain amount of money on a daily basis. All of these are allegations that we cannot now establish because it's one person saying we don't know. But this is what Mr. Fitz is, uh, is reported to have said uh, about her relationship with the lady. Uh, it is also said that uh, Miss Amir here was at, and, and the, for, to that one, there are photographs and videos, so that's verifiable. She and uh, another person attended um, the wedding of Mr. Fitz. Mr. Fitz had conducted a wedding, a very plush wedding at Royal St. Chi Hotel uh, in the Eastern region here in Ghana. It is said that uh, Ms. Amihe and another person were invited to um, MC the wedding. And those who went to the wedding saw Ms. Amihe and another person emceeing the wedding. I wasn't at the wedding. It is also said that soon after the wedding, Ms. Amihe became friends with uh, Mr. Fitz and the rest, as they say, is history. But inside the history is the detail. Uh, the detail then is that they sort of got engaged in the, I don't mean engagement, but they connected with each other and they were dating of sorts. Okay, so whilst dating, they were, they are reported to have gotten very intimate with each other. And uh, whilst they got intimate with each other, they, they got also crazy a little bit, which is allowed. I mean, everyone, oh, I, I can't say everyone, but people, when they get intimate, they get crazy. Okay, but it's indoors. They get crazy indoors. They get intimate indoors. They don't get crazy at the Accra Sports Stadium. But they don't get crazy at the University of Ghana Sports Stadium. They get crazy indoors. So they did get crazy. In the crazy moment, apparently, they filmed their conduct. Their private conduct was filmed. Every, the allegation further says, the report further says, that the filming was occasioned uh, by Sewa Mehe. Uh, but people who know her say it was done at the behest of Mr. Fitz. It was Mr. Fitz who invited her to video. Apparently, it will not be the first time he's inviting a lady to video an intimate expression with him, something like that. Okay. So the police on the 8th of April filed charges against persons believed to have jointly operated towards extorting money from the complainant. Okay, the complainant here is Sarah here. So just to correct what has been happening, Sarah here has not sued Henry Fitz. He's made a complaint to the police. So she is the complainant, and the police have issued a summons. It's going to be a criminal process. Uh, so the difference is that if you look at this, the, the one between the lady, the bank manager, 
and the lady who took a car or something like that. That's, that's a suit. That's a civil action. That's a suit from the, I don't know who she, I think it was a lady. Who sued? The lady. I think it was the lady who sued to keep the car. That's a civil action. No police, nobody goes to jail. So I'm here, so it's a different matter. She hasn't sued. No. She has reported Henry to the police. It is the police who are conducting their investigations. And after preliminary investigations, they have issued a summons. Our purpose tonight is to look at the summons that the police have issued and go into detail to tell you viewers what is likely to happen and what is likely not to happen. Okay, so that's what we're going to do tonight. So this is, a, this is a, uh, the 8th of April. The police then uh, came in with this suit. Let's go through it. Okay, um, the case is entitled The Republic. Now, The Republic is the title of every criminal case. It doesn't mean that the Republic of Ghana is siding with Sewa Amir. No, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> Nobody should say that. It doesn't mean that at all. The Republic versus just means that it's a criminal matter and uh, the um, accused persons, as we call them, the accused persons have been reported by somebody. If somebody comes to my house and uh, uh, steals my mobile phone and I see that he stole my mobile phone and I don't have the power to chase him, I just go to the police and say that somebody brought his car to my house. The car is car number so and so. He stole my mobile phone. But where's the evidence of it? There's a camera in my house that shows it. I give that evidence to the police. They will not take that hook, line, and sinker. They will now investigate it. If they come to the conclusion that, in fact, the person did steal uh, my mobile phone, they will now issue a summons. And it will be called the Republic versus uh, uh, Kofi Menu or the Republic versus uh, my friend Amma who is watching or the Republic versus somebody. Okay. So the Republic versus doesn't mean that the whole state of Ghana is behind Sawam here. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means that she has made a complaint to the police about something that somebody has done to her, which is criminal. And so the police will be prosecuting under the auspices of the Attorney General pursuant to Article 88 of the 1992 Constitution. So let's move on. All right. So uh, the Republic versus Edem Savia Keti. I don't know who he is. He's described in there. And then there's Candilov Kwachi. Kwachewa Abebio, and there is Henry Amponsa. He is the key protagonist known as Henry Fitz, and he is said to be at large. So when the police issue a summons against you, they expect you to come and write a statement. And uh, when we explain in chief, you would hear me say something like, yeah, boy, queer, do I sell banal betro, blah, blah, blah. I'll be doing that very soon. Stay tuned, you get that as well. So uh, when, the, when the prosecution is occasioned against you, you have to come and write a statement. The police will give you a statement to write. If you do not write a statement, if you do not comply, the matter will go to court. If you do not comply, the court will rule against you. If you do not comply, a bunch warrant will be issued against you. If you do not comply, you will go to jail. So Henry Fitz will have to comply at some point. He will have to write a statement. I, I'm sure he has a lot to say. He's already been saying it. So he's, he's going to write a statement. So that's how it is. When it is like this, you, you are supposed to write a statement. So they don't find you, they move to the next stage. They're going to do a court summons. They don't find you, they move to the next stage. They're going to issue bench warrants. They don't find you, they're going to arrest you. They arrest you with a bench warrant, they'll bring you to the court, and then they will pronounce a sentence on you. That's how it works. So it's going to be, it's going to be uh, more interesting than that. All right, let's move on. The statement of offense includes the following. Conspiracy to commit crime. This is uh, the offense that is being alleged that they committed. Conspiracy to commit crime. Let me explain to you why conspiracy comes in. Conspiracy will always be part of any charge sheet. So long as the key actors, um, the purported criminal activity was conducted by more than one person. Once there's more than one person inside, the conspiracy charge will come. The conspiracy will make your punishment severe because it will say conspiracy to doing X and doing X. Doing X alone is an offense that may take you to jail. But when there's conspiracy, there will be more punishment to it. So as soon as the police find that whatever has, been, has happened has happened among uh, more than one person, it will be determined as conspiracy. So conspiracy will be the first charge. So this is normal. Uh, let's, let's keep explaining as we go on. Conspiracy to commit a crime, namely non-consensual sharing of intimate image. That's the crime that they committed. They committed a crime, and we're going, to, we're going to look at the crime in details as well, non-consensual sharing of intimate image. That's the crime they committed. And then uh, that is contrary to Section 23 of the Criminal Offenses Act 1960, Act 29, as amended. And then the more important uh, the law that they may have been violated, which we're going to deal with tonight, is Section 6712 of the Cyber Security Act. That's the big one. The cyber security as a, is a big one. The cyber security has suggests that you cannot do cyber, conduct cyber bullying by publishing videos that I don't want you to publish. 
publishing videos of me that are this, that, that we're going to go into all of those details. So hold on, let's get into the next page of the slide. Particulars of the offense. Adam Savia Keti, age 29, he's a filmmaker. Uh, two, Candilov Kwachiwa Abebio, she's 31. He's a trader. Henry Amponsa uh, at Henry Fitz. He's at large, so they, they have not seen him for him to tell them what he is. That's why, he's, that's why they don't write whether he's a, a teacher, he's a nurse, or whether he's a doctor. Whatever Henry Fitz is, it will be found out when Henry Fitz comes to the, the police station and is asked that, what do you do? And then he will write that, I am Henry Fitz. You go and see uh, a police officer there standing behind the counter and you say, are you Mr. Henry Fitz? Okay, so fill the form. How old are you? Then he'll say this. And then, what do you do for a living? And then he says, I'm a trader. Then he write the trader down. So the reason why Henry Fitz, uh, people are speculating all sorts of things that Henry Fitz doesn't have a profession. That's why they didn't write it. No, it's because they haven't found him. He is at large. Okay. Let's move on. This is what they are accusing them of. For that you, on or before the 3rd of December 2023, at Accra, in the greater Accra region, and within the jurisdiction of this circuit court, I should add, did act together with a common purpose to commit crime, namely non-consensual sharing of intimate images. So that's the main offense. There's extortion also in there. But this is the first offense. They conspired uh, in December 2023, to uh, share non-consensual images of another person being the complainant. Let's move on. Statement of offense. It says, non-consensual sharing of intimate image contrary to section 67 of Cyber Security Act 2020. So it is said that the three accused persons had conspired to share images of the complainant uh, contrary to section 67.1 of the Cyber Security Act uh, Act 1038, which is very recent, passed recently. At the end of the day, we'll tell you why the parliament passed the Cyber Security Act. Let's, let's move on. Particulars of the offense. Um, um, that is, is, is a repetition, that the same thing, the two of them... Uh, okay, so let, let, this is a bit more... Let me read it. For that you, on the 3rd of December 2023, in Accra, in the greater Accra region, and within the jurisdiction of this court, did intentionally distribute... Prohibited visual recording of one Sewa me here without her consent on social media handles. That's the detail of the offense. That the three of them, Henry Fitz and the two others, uh, in Accra in December 2023, uh, intentionally distributed, prohibited visual recording of Sewa me here without her consent on social media. Okay, counts three, statement of offense. Sexual extortion, contrary to Section 66.1 of Cyber Security Act. And we're going to learn uh, the details of that offense as well. It says as follows, the three of them, Henry Fitz and two others. This is what it says. For that you, on the 3rd of December 2023, at Accra in the greater Accra region, and within the jurisdiction of this court, did, with an intent to coerce Sewa Mihir, to pay a cash sum of 5,000 Ghana cities to you, did threaten to distribute prohibited visual recording on the social media handles if the said amount was not paid to you. Mm. It's getting interesting. But why are they demanding 5,000 CDs? Why not 2,000, why not 1,000, why not 10,000, why not 40,000? Where's the figure 5,000 coming from? I'm not sure about it. As I read on, you will see it. figure 20,000 also emerge. Let's go on. All right. Sexual extortion, contrary to section 66 of cybersecurity. This is the next one. Okay. For the three of them, Henry Fitz and the two others. This is what they were reported to have done. For that you, on the 2nd April 2024 at Accra, in the greater Accra region, and within the jurisdiction of this court, did, with an intent to coerce Sewa here to pay a cash sum of 20,000 CDs to you. This threatened, uh, you did threaten to distribute her prohibited visual recording on the social media handles if the said amount of money was not paid to you. We will therefore assume, we will assume that um, because the video, as has been seen by people now on social media, for which reason this summons has been issued by the police, that the video um, uh, did not emerge in December 2023 because as it turns out, it would appear that Sewa Mihir 
did oblige the payment of the money. So it would appear that Mr. Wameye obliged to pay at least 25,000 Ghana cities to Henry Fitz and the two others who were threatening her that they will share the video if she doesn't pay the money. That's what the summons seems to suggest. Let's move.